before I get started, I want to acknowledge all the hard work of the other members of the Glenn Restoration Committee, Bonnie Rosenthal, of course, you've already heard from, and, and Tony Bailey, Pat Crawford, F.T. Clark, Stephen McLaughlin, and Frank Riley. All these folks have contributed many hours in meetings real time and virtual, working through archives, uh, tracking down photos, tracking down maps, uh, and, uh, and helping resolve controversies that we're going to present today. So while you're going to be hearing my voice, it's really the work of all of these individuals. And uh, so the mission of the Glen Restoration Committee is to preserve, protect, and restore the National Park Seminary Glen as a cultural landscape and promote public awareness of support for and access to the Glen. We're going to be doing a virtual tour of the Glen. We'd hoped to do an actual tour last weekend, but of course, the pandemic uh, <laughs> uh, uh, sort of uh, created a different reality for us. So it's going to be virtual. But we want to remind you that the National Park Seminary site is now a residential community privately owned by residents and developers. Now, daytime public access is allowed to most of the NPS Glen that we're going to be visiting. But of course, when you do access it, remember that the entire property should be respected by visitors and preserved for future enjoyment of others. Um, our going to be presenting today all kinds of different materials we've collected, including maps of the National Park Seminary. Um, this is the earliest map that we've located from 1907. Now, I think folks listening to this call are aware that in 1972, the entire 23-acre National Park Seminary was listed as a National Historic District in the National Register of Historic Places. The cultural landscape of the Glen is an integral part of the Historic District, and it constitutes over 13 acres, so more than half of the NPS District is actually in the Glen. The area of the Glen that we're going to be talking about today is outlined here in, in green. And of course, in 1907, uh, most of the features that those of you familiar with the Glen were not developed yet. Uh, now, this compass heading shows up to remind me to mention that at various times um, in this presentation, we're going to show compass headings. Often, this is so that if you're actually visiting the Glen, you can see the orientation, um, uh, uh, the compass heading orientation relative to that uh, photograph. It's also to show that these um, that that these maps are not always in the same orientation. So, for example, this 1907 map does not have north at the top of the page, but actually off to the right. So I'm changing the compass headings to show you where the maps are located. Now, 1918, 19. Uh, you can now see that the area of the Glen uh, nope. has a lot more features nope. developed. Um, and uh, these are um, uh, starting to be the kinds of features that we uh, recognize today. Uh, this is the map from 1927. And, and our committee's work, this has been our goal to, um, to have the, um, uh, to, depict what the, or understand what the Glen looked like and what its features looked like at the height of development, which we perceive was 1927. I'll also point out that sadly, uh, none of these uh, historic maps are entirely accurate and their inaccuracies have resulted in the committee needing to do a lot of work to, to actually understand how roads and paths and features uh, related to each other. And we'll touch on some of that um, research uh, today. Now, of course, also to orient you, um, <laughs> in the 1960s, I-495 uh, came through and cut off a portion of the National Park uh, Seminary property in the Glen. And of course, to help orient you, for those of you who know the area, this road area, which was called a county road at the time, is actually uh, uh, sort of generally the the path of Linden Lane today. Of course, the, uh, the National Park College transitioned to Army property in 1942. This map um, 
is uh, at the time of the transition before any uh, army buildings were constructed, it has some advantages of having top, topographic lines, but it has uh, some inaccuracies as well. And then uh, with your um, Zoom uh, meeting information today, we sent you a PDF of this uh, working map, which shows the list of all the features we've located on the back of your PDF. Um, is the um, is the is the legends with the numbers of the features that, that go along with this map. <clears throat> and uh, over the next 40 minutes or so, we're going to cover this area of the walk, going through most of the the major um, best known uh, features of the National Park Seminary Glen. Then we'll stop at this point by the mermaid in the spring, and we'll have a Q and A. And then for those hardy individuals who want to explore further, I'll be happy to stay online and we'll explore some additional features going this direction. We end up with a lot more in the way of lost paths, disappearing features, controversies, but um, that will complete our entire uh, walk through the Glen. And now we start um, from uh, the Grove to Justice Court. And here we're going to um, go by existing features that some of you are aware of, like the Statue Silva, Justice Court and the Justice Court Stairs, the Statue Justice, the Villa Garden, and some lost features like the Pergola Bridge and the Gazebo. And we're gonna start here in the Grove. And here we have in the Grove, uh, the Statue of Silva, still there today, photo from the 1920s. And you can see that the Grove was what I would call a groomed forest. So you can see that it, it's practically mowed. Uh, the students can be there um, uh, in um, street shoes and, um, and, uh, and, and not really bothered by brush and, and, um, and long grass. <clears throat> Another aspect that suggests this forest has been groomed is, is the fact that this tree looks like it's been limbed so that uh, limbs have been taken off to make it easy for students to walk amongst the trees. And I'll point out that you don't see any road or anything behind here. There's just lots of, of nice uh, wooded area behind Silva. Um, this is something else we'll do from time to time, uh, referring to an insert from the map that shows you where we think the photographer was standing when the photograph was taken. So for those of you who've got the map handy, you can refer to the number and the feature. Notice that in the map today, well, behind Silva is a parking lot, and then there's a road, that's Smith Drive, and then behind that is an army structure. So it looks very different today. Here we are standing in what would have been the grove, looking at the back of Silva. And if we were gonna be doing our tour, we would now take you through this area to take you inside uh, the grove. Now back to historic photos. Um, there were swings in the grove in the 19 teens and probably the 20s. Uh, no compass heading here because we're not exactly sure where this photo was taken. Um, you don't see Silva in the photo. Now, uh, as we've been scrutinizing these photos, we notice that, gosh, um, this tree, which we think is probably a tulip poplar, and this tree, which we think was an oak tree that had been limbed, look pretty similar to these trees here. So maybe the photographer was just standing off to the side with Silva over <laughs> sort of at their left shoulder when they took this photograph. But we can't know for sure. Here's another view of the, um, of, of the grove, and you can again see a nice uh, wooded area uh, with a very groomed appearance to the, um, uh, to the, the forest floor. Yeah. Uh, you can see that um, soak it if you Smith don't want to Drive, it. you can see oh, that Smith Drive tomorrow. is not, uh, sorry, somebody is not on mute, Bonnie. Just checking. Um, 
Uh, Smith Drive that's there now is not there. And obviously Smith Drive runs pretty close to Silva. That parking lot would be right in here. Uh, so this was a much more uh, larger wooded area in the day. And here we've got the first view of the Pergola Bridge. Uh, the villa is over here. The Pergola Bridge runs to a uh, colonial house um, uh, across the streams um, in the Glen. Now here's another view of the Pergola Bridge, um, a little further toward the colonial house. You can see Silva there. Um, and now we've got peeking out from the right, a new feature, the gazebo. The photographer here was probably standing on the castle bridge, um, uh, uh, looking sort of across uh, the, the, the grounds um, leading up to the, uh, to the grove here and uh, looking over the pergola. Now we're going to present day. We've now entered the grove. We're in front of Silva. Silva is uh, off to uh, behind us to the left. And the Save Our Seminary Glen Restoration Committee has been working with the permission of uh, the developer. This property is still under development to clear some paths so that if we had been able to do a real walk instead of a virtual tour, we could have taken you through some trails to see some features here in the grove. And there off in the distance would be where we think the gazebo would have been. And we walk further down that path and here is a, a blue outline of my guesstimate regarding the actual sort of location and approximate layout of the floor of the gazebo. Now, here's a, a fuller photograph uh, of what the gazebo looked like. They're not quite at the top of the hill for the grove, but, uh, but well above the uh, pergola and pergola bridge. And our hardworking uh, committee members who were searching through all of the archives and the scrapbooks and photo albums of the students located this nice picture of the gazebo from the 1910s. Now this photo, this photographer uh, I'm, we're thinking was sort of standing uphill a little bit from where the gazebo is looking and looking down. And there's a structure back there. That structure is the colonial house. And if you were to go there today, stand in a similar spot, look down, this blue uh, box might be the approximate location and, um, of the gazebo. And there, uh, can't really see it very well, but that is the colonial house in the background. And having discovered that, well, looks like you could see the gazebo, uh, you could see the colonial house from the gazebo, well, then you probably could see the gazebo from the colonial house and studying uh, photos of the colonial house. Yep, there's the gazebo up above. And we've used this photograph to help us guesstimate where uh, the gazebo was located. Now we're gonna work, walk a little further down the Pergola Bridge, again, villa off in this direction, Colonial House at the end of the Pergola Bridge here. Gazebo would have been up here. And this is in 1990. Now in, in the coming uh, months and years, the rest of the Pergola is going to collapse due to uh, an ice storm followed by a tree fall. But you can see there are still elements there. Uh, this is a convention now we're using that if, if, the, if, the, if the feature is highlighted in red, that means it's been lost. So this is no longer there presently. And you can see there's a brick pier adjacent to the pergola walk. We're imagining that this was to support the second floor, the second deck of the pergola bridge. And then you can see the, the, um, the walk underneath that second deck is uh, here. Castle, by the way, is here. This photo was taken from the top of the castle. Um, this uh, is intended to show you the path of the trail that we've created for uh, tours when we are able to do those in person, leading from in front of Silva over to the 
the suspected location of the gazebo, then down the hillside of the um, of the grove, and then down the steeper part of the hillside across the surface of the pergola walk, and then along the outside of the pergola. And after a lot of clearing, here you can see that um, pergola walk, uh, and here's a second brick pier that we think was probably holding the, the top deck of the pergola bridge. You walk down the hill from the grove, across the deck of the pergola walk, and then go this direction toward the villa road, and there's the castle in the background. And then here back um, in the historic area, we've walked across the deck of that lower pergola walk. We're now standing in this grassy area, looking at the villa. Now you may wonder, well, gosh, where's that villa road we saw earlier? And it actually goes underneath um, the pergola, which is illustrated in this photograph. Here's the Villa Road. Villa's over in this direction. Here's the pergola bridge and the pergola walk. And the Villa Road goes underneath the pergola bridge. A reminder, there's Silva in the background. Now, if you're there today, um, you'll see the remnants of the Villa Road you'll see a portion of the villa. This uh, portion of the villa was uh, too badly damaged to be restored and was, uh, permission was given to the developers to take this down. And uh, this ground is actually somewhat higher than it was. Um, uh, some earth that was excavated in the construction of the, uh, the National Park Seminary was uh, placed here for future use so that this is actually a little higher than it was in the days when the pergola bridge and pergola walk ran this direction. All right, so now we're going to leave the grove and leave the pergola and walk down the villa road. Um, and the first thing we see, of course, is the castle off to our left. We continue down the villa road and actually here we're standing up uh, by the castle, possibly on the porch of the castle, looking down. And we see um, the villa gardens, and we see justice and the justice court. And here, of course, is the villa. This is actually one of those photos from 1909. Now, here's another view of the villa gardens. This is actually taken from the drawbridge that led from the castle bridge over to the castle, which is here. Looking down from that drawbridge after a snow, we see the uh, villa gardens, and here's the villa. Now, of course, there is no castle drawbridge today, so I couldn't get up, <laughs> up high enough to try to recreate that photograph. I'm standing up uh, right up against the castle, looking down at the at the villa gardens and <laughs> you see a little bit of the stairway and some of the stonework, obviously uh, very different uh, in 2020. And then uh, the statue here was replaced with a stone uh, basin. This is in the 1920s. So this is again, a view of the villa gardens. You go there today, it's all covered with porcelain berry, but that basin, stone basin is still hiding there underneath the invasive vegetation, and uh, here's uh, all that nice stone uh, work. Now we're looking back across the Villa Gardens um, toward um, the castle. And now we can turn and head into Justice Court. Now looking back at Justice, in the Justice Court, and there's, of course, the villa in the background. Castle Bridge is there. Now we'll start to exit Justice Court, we'll, where Justice is behind us, a little uphill. We're walking down toward the Justice Court stairs. Now, at this point, we're about to, to go down the stairs and leave uh, Justice Court. 
Now we're going to go from the Justice Court stairs to the North Glen Bridge abutment. And here we're going to get into an area of considerable controversy. It's, uh, the committee did a lot of work to try to figure out what was happening in this area. It's considerably changed today. So we're going to start at there at the top of the Justice Court stairs. And this part of the walk, we're going to end at the North Glen Bridge abutment, which is still there today. And then we're going to contemplate some lost features that were um, covered up or destroyed in the process of, of constructing I-495. All right, so now we've gone down the Justice Court stairs and we're looking back in the 1920s. There you can see justice in the background. Now I'm gonna stop and go over a variety of features that I've, that I've referenced and, uh, and, and also prepare you for some of the things we're going to be figuring out in the next few slides. So here we have justice. Here we've got the justice court stairs that we've walked down. There's the Villa Road over here. Of course, we walked down the Villa Road a little earlier to get um, past the castle and over to uh, Justice Court. But the Villa Road continues down into the Glen. Here, of course, is Colonial House that we've referenced, still there today. There's the main uh, building, uh, of course, originally called Ye Forest Inn. Here's the hillside walk that still exists today. It's gonna to turn into a set of switchbacks we're gonna be visiting later. The grand staircase, uh, which is still visible today, although in considerable disrepair. And there's the grotto we'll be visiting, and there's the spring that folks who visited the Glen uh, are familiar with. So those are things that, uh, um, that are there today, can be seen. Of course, the Castle Bridge is gone. The Glen Bridge is gone. Now, another important feature that's still there today, and of course has been there for thousands of years, is the stream, because the Glen was really created by the water flow uh, through these streams. There's the main stream that we've been calling the Glen Stream that presently leads from up near I-495 and runs down uh, continues down uh, through the Glen, ultimately uh, reaching uh, Rock Creek. Then there's a smaller tributary stream that still runs today um, along Hume Drive past um, the spring, joins with the main Glen stream to continue down to Rock Creek. So those streams have been an important element of the Glen and probably an important element of the change in the appearance of the Glen over the last 100 years. Because, for example, there used to be a footbridge at this area we call the crossroads. Well, we don't know what they called it during the school years, but it represents the crossing of several paths and the Villa Road and the County Road. So we have called this area for convenience the crossroads. And there was a footbridge here that's completely lost. There is a uh, a bridge wall that we've determined through our research was, uh, was an upstream bridge wall for the county road. Of course, that means there was a county road that ran through this area, ran underneath the, the Glen Bridge, actually ran under the Sphinx Bridge, which is off this direction, and then, um, and then crossed the stream and went uphill and ultimately went to the train station and beyond. Now, we won't be visiting the Sphinx Bridge today. We're not going to be visiting any areas uh, further downstream than the Glen Bridge because our research hasn't really found any features intended for enjoyment of the students past the Glen Bridge. There were other structures. There were mechanical structures, a boiler house, et cetera. Um, uh, but our focus has suggest, our research has suggested that all of the features enjoyed by the students during the height of the school were past uh, the Glen Bridge. And then, of course, if there was a county road bridge wall upstream, there must have been a county road bridge wall downstream as well. And it is almost completely lost. We found remnants of it now that we'll show you in a few minutes. All right, well, this is a fun YouTube video for those of you who'd like to visit it. Not a great image 
um, <laughs> um, but um, that I've done a screen capture of, but it shows um, uh, some key elements uh, in, involved in this sort of mystery of what was going on um, at the crossroads. So this was a YouTube video from 1995, and you can see the videographer walk down the justice court stairs, and then I paused the video at this point and took these pictures, and you can see, well, there is a remaining element of that footbridge at the crossroads. Here's the Glen Stream. This is that stream that goes by the spring that's going to combine with the Glen Stream. Here's the Grand Staircase. Here's one of the bridges, uh, the piers of the Glen Bridge. Of course, the Glen Bridge by 1995 is long since gone. And here is the County Road Bridge Wall upstream, which is still there today and was there in 1995. For those of you who are trying to stay oriented, here's the photographer or videographer in this case, standing at the bottom of the Justice Court stairs, looking this direction through the area of the crossroads. Number 18 is, by the way, the, the, the um, footbridge uh, of the, uh, at the crossroads. And this is a modern uh, photograph. You can see the footbridge at the crossroads is completely lost. I'm gonna zoom in and show you some rubble that we think was related to that. You can still see that county road bridge wall that's upstream. You can see the grand staircase there. Remember the spring and the road to the villa are off to your left. The photographer is standing at the path from Justice Court stairs. And there across the Glen Stream now is the path to the North Glen Bridge abutment, which the Save Our Seminary, or pardon me, which the National Park Seminary Homeowners Association um, Land Use Committee has worked hard to clear in preparation for the actual tour that's now become a virtual tour. Here's a uh, photograph from the HABS or Historic American Building Survey uh, from 1999. Again, shows that footbridge at the crossroads, shows the retaining wall, shows the county road uh, bridge wall that's upstream. Again, the Grand Staircase and the Glen Bridge Pier. And remember, this is that path from the Justice Court stairs that led across this footbridge. Now today, having cleared this out, walked a little closer uh, to the stream there, you can see rubble from a footbridge, chunks of stone that look like they could have also been a part of a footbridge. And then there you can get a good look at the path to the North Glen Bridge abutment heading up that direction across the stream. Even closer, we're into the fall now so that the path to the North Glen Bridge abutment is covered with leaves, but you can see the stream, you can see more rubble from the, the uh, footbridge. All right, so now if you're intrepid enough, you're going to cross that footbridge, which is not any, there any longer. <laughs> so this is a kind of treacherous crossing. Back in the day, you could have just walked um, across the stream using the footbridge. And, um, and then this is what you might have seen. Turn, go on the footbridge, make an immediate right turn. And there you are on the county road that leads from the grotto to the train station. Here we've got some students, nice picture in the snow. There's the villa bridge that runs from the villa to the train station in the background. You don't really see it, but the path to the North Glen Bridge abutment would be off to the left. I think maybe that was a sled. Of course, we know the Glen Stream was in this area. Justice Court is up the hill to our right here. And the photographer, remember, has walked across that footbridge at the crossroads and then made an immediate right turn and is looking up the county road. And here we are, modern times, and again, uh, um, great appreciation to the National Park Seminary Homeowners Association, whose uh, volunteers have done tremendous work to clear this path and uh, make this uh, passable and walkable.
Now we continue this path, this path of the county road that ultimately leads to the train station. We continue on this path and then we have to make a sharp uh, left turn because there is a stone wall here, which we think is a county, as a stone wall that went along the right hand side uh, of the uh, county road. We continue up the path of the county road. There's more of that uh, county road stone wall to your right. And we don't have any historic photos of this spot right here where the county road and the path to the North Glen Bridge abutment meet. But we have this uh, photo from um, the south end of the Glen Bridge from the Army years that shows this area. You can see the county road stone wall running along the side of the county road. See the path to the North Glen Bridge abutment going up here. Of course, this is the, the north end of the Glen Bridge. And then here's the path to this train station heading off this direction. And there's that building called the Castle of Forest Glen that's still there today. Now I referred to the North Glen Bridge abutment. There it is. Again, we started sort of an earlier photograph at the south uh, end of the Glen Bridge. Now we're at the north end. This would be the path that led down into the Glen. Uh, if you were walking along that path to the county road, you would arrive around here. And you note that at this area, there's a distinctive pattern to the uh, cement in the path. We think this was basically uh, for the place where the path crossed the old county road. And lo and behold, when you're there today at the North Glen Bridge abutment, thanks to the hard work of the National Park Cemetery Homeowners Association, this path has been all cleared, and you can see that distinctive pattern to the path. Now, you might, might be wondering why the photographer, in this case me, didn't recreate this photograph. Well, my back is directly against the fence that, <laughs> that separates this path from I-495. So to take this photograph, I would have had to have been somewhere <laughs> in the right-of-way of I-495, probably above the, um, the, the right-hand shoulder for the, um, the uh, eastbound lanes of I-495. So can't get that photo today. All right, now we're going to go from the Glen Bridge to the train station and see some things that have been lost to I-495. In this case, the photographer is basically looking this direction following the path to uh, the train station. The first uh, photo we've got is from the uh, 1905 to 1910 period, uh, again, from a, uh, a, a photo album. And uh, you can see here's the county road, here's a county road wall, um, here's the path to the Glen Bridge. Now at this point, this uh, is um, a much more crude uh, uh, crossing of the county road there. It almost looked like it might have been a plank across the mud. Uh, notice that um, the photographer is probably standing on the Glen Bridge, and you can see some of the, the, the uh, pattern, the shadows of the Glen Bridge uh, structure uh, there on the stones. Now, um, here we've got um, uh, a little further along on that path, uh, this is actually probably prior to the previous photo because you don't see the stonework for the county road there. Continuing on the path to the train station, of course, the Glen Bridge would be back this direction. And lo and behold, there was a putting green and, um, and, um, and there's a, a student working on her short game probably, as well as a student who's putting. There's the train station in the background. And now, uh, here we are uh, with students uh, near the train station. Now we're going to go from the Glen Bridge back down into the grotto, but we're going to take a different path. Instead of following the county road, we're going to take um, a uh, path that ran from the North Glen Bridge abutment down into the grotto. 
This is a pretty short section of the walking tour, but we cover a lot of the best known and most visible historic features. We're going to start here by the North Glen Bridge Abutment. There we are with another um, image of the North Glen Bridge Abutment and the Glen Bridge in the 1920s. We're going to uh, ultimately head down that path into the Glen. That's what it looks like here today. When the leaves are finally off the trees and the invasive species, there's a lovely view of, um, of the Glen from that spot. It's uh, quite a drop, however, so we've had a, uh, a warning um, uh, there to caution people about uh, getting up uh, on that um, uh, part of the Glen Bridge abutment. We don't know the uh, exact date of this photo. Montgomery County Historical Society has been, its offices have been closed, so we haven't really been able to connect with them to document the dating of this photograph. It's obviously when the Glen Bridge is still a thing, still there. There we've got the North Glen Bridge abutment again. Now we're seeing a photograph of the Grand Staircase. And uh, here we've got that county road uh, front that leads from the Sphinx Bridge into the grotto here. And there's that county road bridge wall downstream that is now largely lost. That's still there when this photo was taken. Now we're going to walk down that path um, from the Glen Bridge abutment down uh, to the, uh, the county road. This is in the 1920s. Thinking this photograph was probably taken uh, from the, uh, the Glen Bridge because you can't really get that angle today. This is a photograph of, of that uh, path today. You can see you know, the great work that's been done by volunteers to clear that stonework so that you can, you can see what that uh, stone path uh, looked like back in the school days. Now, just briefly going to revisit and reorient this um, painting that we saw before. By the way, this, uh, this um, image comes from a painting that was in the 1918-19 uh, catalog. And I'm going to point out several inaccuracies um, you know, that have thrown us off uh, regarding uh, this, this work, work of art relative to the actual uh, Glen. So the Grand Staircase, you know, did not lead directly onto the county road. It actually angled this direction. Can you see that? Uh, th there was a separate path that led from the Grand Staircase this direction. The county road was much wider. Um, of course, the, the crossing of the stream at the county road bridge was much right, wider. And instead of there just being this one path, there was the county road and also the stone path uh, from the bridge abutment that we've already referred to. So, you know, there are a lot of core things that were correct, uh, but uh, some details that were not accurately reflected um, in this uh, artwork. And now we start to get a, so a signal of how the, the streams changed what was going on down here in the Glen. Here's an aerial photograph, and you can see that the Glen stream has started eroding through the county road, and you can see the beginning degradation of that county road bridge wall downstream. County road bridge wall upstream seems to be out of trouble. Remember, the path from Justice Court Stairs is this direction. The road to the villa is this direction going to the spring is this direction. And of course, the grand staircase is here. Now, um, this is looking across the Glen stream at the grand staircase. And you can see here's a bridge wall. We were puzzled by this for quite a while, but we've determined, well, this is the county road bridge wall downstream. It's largely lost. If you t walk down that path from the North Glen Bridge abutment and then work a little bit to your right off that main path and look across the stream, 
uh, you will see um, some <laughs> some stonework that's the, basically the base of that old county road bridge wall downstream. And there's, of course, the um, considerably degraded um, grand staircase as well. So we figured out that this is the county road bridge wall, which is the remnant of it is still there today. Of course, here we've got a photo of the grand staircase. This is in the late 1930s. And at that time, there was a, um, a lamp stand and a small statue. The base of that statue is still there today, but the rest of the statue is long gone. And of course, here's the grotto, grand staircases over in this direction. Grotto at the time it has lots of nice amenities, uh, two benches, uh, a pedestal with a stat Greek statue on it. And here you get just a sense of the fact that the hillside walk ended with a nice uh, switchback walk with, um, with a uh, stone wall. The elements of that switchback walk are still there, gradually falling into the glen, and there are elements of that stone wall also uh, falling into the glen. And notice that uh, because of the erosion, the grotto is considerably filled in um, this stone wall relative, uh, that is part of the structure of the grand staircase is substantially filled in. Obviously, you wouldn't have room for a bench uh, there uh, uh, today that was there um, in the 1918-1919 era. Now, this photograph um, gave us a, a lot of, <laughs> of things to think about. Wonderful photograph from 1919-1920 from uh, a student scrapbook. Um, and we knew, well, hmm, okay, so this is obviously the Justice Court stairs. There's Justice. There's the villa. That must be the Villa Road. But well, what are the rest of these things? We realized, well, okay, this is the county road. The photographer is standing on the county road looking up uh, and, the, the, and the grand staircase must be off to our right here. But uh, it took us considerable work to try to figure out what all these features were in their relationship. But we think we have, we're pretty confident that we have figured this out. So uh, as I've said, there's the county road that runs from the Sphinx Bridge to the Grotto. There's the Justice Court stairs in the villa. There's the Villa Bridge to the train station, which is now lost, the Villa Road, the Glen Stream. Okay, we know where all that is today. This, we think, is the path to the North Glen Bridge abutment, which we've uncovered. This is that County Road bridge wall upstream that's still there today. This is that path that ran from the Grand Staircase to the Villa Road that we've seen in other photographs. The County Road ran across this bridge crossing here, and then went um, sort of behind this hill, this direction. And these students and faculty seem to be sitting on the county road bridge wall downstream, looking at the grotto. If you go there today, here's that remnant of the county road bridge wall downstream. There's the county road bridge wall upstream. There are these stone slabs that we think are part of the county, the sort of base of the county road bridge that uh, ran across the stream. There is, of course, Justice Court stairs again. And then the county road ran to the train station going this direction. And if you stand in the grotto and look across, this is what you'll see. You see the county road bridge wall upstream here. You see that remnant of the county road bridge wall downstream here. This is, we think, the route of the county road from the grotto to the train station. And there, of course, is the path to the North Glen Bridge Abutment. And what were those students looking at? Well, if you stand on this remnant of that county road bridge wall, that's, this is what you see. You see the grotto. And we think the students were probably there to watch some of their colleagues uh, practicing uh, a performance. 
The grotto seems to have been used, and we've got several photographs that document this as a place for uh, students to perform. So we've covered all of these features except the spring. I'll quickly visit the spring and things next to the spring, and then we'll stop for questions. From the crossroads past the spring to the mermaid. Very short walk with just a few features. So here's the, uh, the, the uh, looking up the stream uh, to the spring. I'm imagining the student taking this photograph may have been standing on that footbridge at the crossroads. And so the, the Glen stream was perhaps running underneath, underfoot this direction. So this might be the area where the two streams were, uh, were meeting, but uh, that's speculation. That's what this area looks like today. There's the spring and the bridge. Now here's a view near the crossroads back in the day. There's the Justice Court stairs. There's the, um, the, the castle bridge. And this is what this looks like today. There's the Justice Court stairs. There's the castle. There's the Villa Road. And this is there to, to remind us that among the reasons why this looks so different, there is, of course, the, uh, all the, you know, the erosion caused by the water, but also um, uh, the, um, you know, the, the um, WSSC, which is the organization that manages uh, the sewers in Montgomery County, has done a lot of work in this area. And uh, this is just, you know, a, uh, a, a sewer manhole that just represents the kind of work that's been done here that's rearranged some of the features. Now here we've got the spring in 1918-19. And there's the spring uh, now. Uh, of course, the spring, um, you know, is, is suffering from the effects of, of water and water overflow as that tributary stream um, overflows at times with heavy rains. Here's another picture of the spring, a little bit uphill. Notice that there is a stone wall here and that there seems to be a path between that stone wall and the spring itself. Here's a student uh, standing in the stone, um, in the spring, peeking out, and there's this path and now it took us a while to figure out where this photo was, but this is that stone wall next to the spring. Here's the Glen, the tributary stream. There's the Villa Road in the background. There's the Castle Bridge. And here's our first photo, first glimpse of the mermaid. This is, of course, in the snow. That's a similar photo today. There you can see the spring. You can see that stone wall. You can, this is, we'll show you in a minute where the platform of the mermaid is. Here's the Villa Road. And our researchers indicated that there was a path that led from the spring all the way along, uh, all the way down to the, um, the area um, between the colonial house and the castle that we call the footbridge intersection. Um, uh, much of this path has been lost over time due to erosion, due to uh, erosion from this tributary stream. If you'd walked down that path, if you continued this direction back in the day, you'd still be on this path and you could look across and you would see the mermaid. So you've got the tributary stream between the photographer and uh, the mermaid. So the photographer is standing on this walk, walk the path uh, from the spring to the Footbridge intersection, looking across the stream at the mermaid. You take that position today as best you can. You'll see this platform for the mermaid. You'll see the overgrown views along the Justice Court stairs and the Villa Road. The mermaid was a popular feature with the students back in the day, as shown by this um, uh, photo album picture, among others. And the mermaid was not just a, a statue, but a fountain, as this catalog photograph demonstrates. 
And in fact, if you're standing at the Villa Road and you look down, you'll see the platform for the mermaid that has a hole, which we think was the water source for the fountain. Of course, this is the tributary stream, pretty dry at the moment. This is that lost path, lost due to erosion. But here you see the stonework picking up again that can still be uncovered in this little section of that path. And the photographer here is standing at the edge of the Villa Road, looking across uh, that tributary stream toward that old lost path. So now we've um, done our main tour, starting in the Grove, leading down into the Glen and the crossroads, up to the North Glen Bridge abutment, and then down to the Grotto, the Spring and the Mermaid. And I'm happy now to um, answer any questions. Bonnie, let's go for the questions. Okay. Um, there was only one question that I saw. Uh, are there plans to clear away all the growth to expose the wall of the castle garden, which was a very dramatic uh, covering there with the basin and the stones? That's a, that's a great question. Of course, we're, we're all hoping that the developer who, who owns the castle and the villa will finally proceed with redevelopment. And we're anticipating that part of that development would be to completely clear that area. Um, uh, it's sort of a debate about what to do in the meantime. Um, the, um, the National Park Seminary homeowners don't actually own and control that portion of the property. Uh, so that group is understandably focused on clearing areas that the National Park Seminary Homeowners Association is responsible for. Um, so um, yes, ultimately there are plans to clear all of that up in the redevelopment, uh, but um, it, <laughs> making that a priority has been more complicated than other areas. Great, okay. Um, we have another question. Will there be future presentations um, I don't know if you, that person means about the Glen or just future presentations from Save Our Seminary. Uh, the question is, uh, yes, we will have future presentations uh, as we have done this year because we can't do in-person uh, presentations or programs. We've gone online with Zoom. Um, we've had one other this year and that was in September. Uh, that was about African Americans who worked at uh, National Park Seminary. Um, and we'll be planning next year, 2021 uh, programs, uh, probably in January, February. By February, we should put out our, our programs for next year. Um, it takes a lot of research and, and time to put these together. So, uh, but we'll do what we can. Um, and I think yeah, and I'll, go ahead. I'll mention Bonnie that um, that of course uh, under your guidance, Save Our Seminary has done a lot of little short video programs. Correct. And uh, and um, uh, there is one that's on sort of the mystery of the mermaid. Uh, if you wanted to know more about um, all the research we did on the mermaid and sort of possibilities for bringing the mermaid back. You can look for that. And, uh, and we've got other ideas for little short pieces we might do on some of the other little mysteries we've uncovered um, for uh, the Glen Restoration Committee. And then finally, I'll say, we do look forward to the day when we can do real in-person tours of, <laughs> uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the Glen. So, you know, this was a virtual tour, but we worked hard to prepare for an, an actual in-person tour. We look forward to, to doing that in the future. Right, right. Uh, we do have one other question that doesn't, uh, it said, what about some features down Linden Lane fenced off by Walter Reed, which is on the western side of the whole seminary property? Um, that is owned by Walter Reed, or actually it's the, it's, um, Forest Glen Annex for the Army that no longer is called Walter Reed. Um, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> we can follow up um, it, about that. It is, a, it is a whole nother story. And um, 
you know, uh, a number of us who are interested uh, in the Glen are also interested in that as well. Uh, I'll mention that the, the, the formal Glen of Forest Glen is the area that we've been talking about. And that, of course, was another part of the original National Park Seminary property. And there are some interesting features down there as well, some sadly not readily accessible anymore. But they are um, technically not part of the uh, of the of the Glen of the National Park Seminary. Right, and then, as someone commented, oh, like the witch's house. I guess a lot of people used to call the uh, picnic house the witch's house. That's over on the Walter Reed or the Army's property. So yes, we yep. could maybe do a story or a tour someday. Who knows? Um, someone else asked, where can we find these short stories? They are on our website and also on our Facebook page. Uh, it's easy enough to go to our website, saveourseminary.org, um, and find all of the short stories that are, are really quite interesting. Um, and you can also find out about these uh, programs. Uh, you can ask to be email us and, and say, put me on your email list. Um, and we get a lot of positive questions, very nice interest or comments, just awesome job, great great research. Um, let's see, uh, what were some of the, what were some of the features of the grotto showed in some of the pictures to me? Uh, yes, okay, let me quickly speed back to that. Um, sorry, took me a little longer than I intended. Um, so, um, oh, I'll just work with this one. So, um, so again, remember the, there was the, the grand staircase was over here to the right. There was a bench there that students could, you know, could sit on and enjoy. There was another bench here. There was this, um, pedestal with a Greek sculpture here. This area was all pretty flat. Uh, and it was obviously roomy enough that students could do uh, practice plays or, or do uh, per performances in this area. So I'd say from the photographs that those are the features that we found uh, relative to the grotto. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, someone has a question, maybe your, your extended tour gene will answer this. Uh, they noticed an old footpath and stone bridge above the firehouse. Did a path run up the entire tributary? Uh, indeed. For those of you who are uh, <laughs> in, uh, not tired and are intrepid explorers, we will be happy to take you uh, through all those other paths to that mysterious spot that we call the Long Footbridge. Right now. Are you ready to, yeah. Um, sure. One other, right, one, one other question, Jean, before you start that. Um, person asks, are there any stories about the lives of students from the seminary? Yes, we've done longer programs on uh, some of those aspects of the students themselves and that are also, those are also posted on our website under past events. Uh, this is a really important question. Is there any plan to restore parts of the Glen or prevent further deterioration? <laughs> oh, that is a great question. Uh, and um, uh, due to the hard work of several of my colleagues, we have two grant proposals that have been submitted to, um, to do further detailed research to figure out what it would cost to restore certain of the lo these lost features. Um, and um, it is certainly uh, part of the mission of uh, Save Our Seminary and the Glen Restoration Committee to do what we can to actually, um, you know, support the preservation of, of those features. So not just clearing paths, working with uh, the National Park Center Homeowners Association to clear paths, but to actually um, find the resources to um, to restore some of these paths and uh, bridges and other features. 
And um, I'll also say, if you go to saveourseminary.org, uh, you can also contribute. You can contribute to the Save Our Seminary mission in general, or you can um, uh, contribute specifically to Glenn Restoration. And, uh, and you know, uh, every, every dollar that, uh, that folks uh, commit to, um, you know, to Glenn Restoration you know, will be used uh, for the, those efforts to, to actually um, restore these uh, features that are endangered or lost. Thanks for that question. Great. Okay, Gene, why don't you go ahead then with the next section? All right. So we're going to take the extended tour from the Mermaid to the Long Footbridge. Uh, and we're going to be going past several lost footbridges at this point. We're going to pass several eroded or lost segments of paths. We're going to see that there's been a substantial change in the stream bed we're going to follow. And we're going to run into considerable, uh, even more speculation than we've done thus far. I would say the Glen Restoration Committee pretty much agrees with the understanding of the elements of the Glen that I've described thus far. Um, some areas, you know, are at this point uh, of what we're going to discuss remain controversial. Um, I'll also mention that some of these uh, areas we're going to visit are even more rugged. So uh, I would also be warning you if you were coming with me in person to take care and uh, hopefully bring a walking stick on the tour. But with those warnings, here we go. We're going to start from the mermaid. And then we're going to head to this area I've called the foot, or we've called the footbridge intersection. We're going to start there at the spot where we left off on the Villa Road, looking across at the place where the mermaid was located. We're going to go up the Villa Road and then see a few lost features along the way to the footbridge intersection, which is between the colonial house here and the castle here. And here we go. The first feature we will run into is something that we call the pedestal with brackets. Here's the pedestal with brackets. There was a large disc there. We do not know what this disc was for. We have another photograph that shows a student standing on the disc with no snow. You could think, well, maybe the disc was a, um, was a sundial, but there's no sign of markings um, or any of the features of a sundial. We don't know what this was, but we know it was about where it was located. It's here's the Villa Road. There's the villa in the background. There's the Castle Bridge. Pedestal with brackets. Don't know exactly where it was, but we know of the approximate location. Again, the photographer is standing here looking uh, up, and there's the uh, Castle Bridge in the background, the villa uh, back here. Oh, and, and there, of course, is the Villa Gardens here, which is here. And the pedestal with brackets is still there. Um, the last work that WSSC did on sewers uh, and streams in this area, WSSC moved uh, this pedestal with brackets from the position downhill from the Villa Road to uphill from the Villa Road, presumably to get it out of the way. Just this court is up here. The Villa is here. Um, uh, so the, cat, the pedestal with brackets is still there. You know, the disc haven't found. All right. And then if you walk, um, uh, um, uh, let me um, just say, if you walk downhill from this pedestal with brackets, and then you look back, you would be more or less in this location. And here we've got the first bridge on the path from the, the spring to that footbridge intersection below the Colonial House. You zoom in on this photograph, you can see a lot of interesting things. There's the spring. There's the footbridge at the spring. There's that stone wall that leads uh, along the beginning of the path that runs in front of the, the spring past the mermaid, which is there and continues on to this footbridge the student is standing on. So this is that path from the spring to the footbridge intersection. 
Um, here's some other photographs, earlier photographs of that same area, we think. There's this footbridge, which is actually now lost. And we call that the lost footbridge at the pedestal. Now that is not referring to the pedestal with brackets. It's a different pedestal that I'm gonna show you in a minute. The tributary stream that runs past the spring down this direction is running underneath this footbridge. There's the Villa Road and the crossroads down in there. So this is this path running from the spring across this footbridge, ultimately to the footbridge intersection. Here's another photograph. There's the lost footbridge. We call it the lost footbridge at the pedestal because there is another one of those pedestals with a Greek statue. This is a nice little stop along this path. There's a, a nice uh, bench. So uh, a footbridge, pedestal, statue, bench, all of this are lost or mostly lost because the pedestal is still there. You can imagine that as uh, no one was tending this area, the tributary stream overflows, continue, erosion continues, the pedestal gets undermined. Ultimately, it just falls over and there it is still lying in the stream today. By the way, this is the area where we think that lost footbridge that was next to the pedestal uh, was. And there you can see pieces of stone, some of it uh, cemented together down in the stream. You think this is the area of that lost footbridge. If you cross over this area, you can uncover some of that stonework from the path. Of course, the spring is there. Mermaid platform is in here. So path from the spring to this, um, along this path, across this bridge, headed to the footbridge intersection. All right, now here's the castle bridge, which of course is lost. There's justice in the background. There's the justice court stairs. There's the Villa Road. There's that crossroads where the Villa Road meets the county road, other paths. And here's the path that's running from the spring to the footbridge intersection. It runs underneath the castle bridge and lo and behold, there's another footbridge there. We call that the footbridge under the castle bridge. I found this quite confusing. I originally thought that that other lost footbridge was this footbridge, which is still there today. But no, there were two footbridges along this path. And here is that footbridge under the castle bridge. Here we've got a student. We think this is probably the same student that we saw standing on that other footbridge a little earlier. There we've got the um, a pier of the castle bridge uh, here. And there's that tributary stream. And there is the footbridge under the castle bridge today. And there's the stonework from that path from the spring to the footbridge intersection running across here, the tributary stream. And uh, here's an aerial photograph uh, from the HAV survey 1999. Of course, this is the um, where the abutment was for the uh, south end of the Castle Bridge. Castle Bridge is now gone. Uh, the footbridge under the Castle Bridge, though, is still there as it is today. And here's that path from the spring to the footbridge intersection. And we're going to run into the footbridge intersection over here. This is a narrow photograph. So this is actually the castle um, overlooking the uh, footbridge intersection. And there's the Colonial House. All right, you've seen a uh, a close-up of this photo before. I'm going to go over some features we didn't talk about before. This is the Pergola Bridge, of course. This is in 1990, shortly before the Pergola Bridge uh, collapsed. Colonial House is just peeking out over here. Here's that um, path from the spring to the footbridge intersection. And here's the footbridge intersection. You've got a footbridge to the castle, and a footbridge that runs under the Pergola Bridge. And as I said before, here's the castle. Now, this photo was from 1990. This is after the uh, Pergola Bridge has collapsed. 
There's still some steam pipes and other things that are left, but the pergola bridge itself is gone. This is from another YouTube video from 1998. And here you can see the footbridge to the castle, pointed it out earlier. Here's that path that runs from the spring to this footbridge intersection. And here's that footbridge under the pergola bridge, which is now largely lost. And here's the stairs and path that led from the footbridge intersection all the way up to the long footbridge. And here we are today. Some homeowners, um, homeowners uh, who own the uh, colonial house, that family has done a lot of work to clean up this area and to uncover the elements of this now largely lost footbridge that was there. Uh, there's again the path from the spring to the footbridge intersection. There is the restored footbridge to the castle. And this is where residents, uh, since you can't take this path to go up this direction, this is the path that residents have created by just walking repeatedly uh, that leads from this footbridge intersection area onto the long footbridge and along a path uh, along Hume Drive. Now we're gonna go from this footbridge intersection to the long footbridge, and this will complete our uh, tour uh, of all the paths that we've uncovered uh, in the Glen. So we're gonna start at the footbridge intersection. We're basically gonna follow a fairly straight path to Hume Drive. Remind you that the gazebo was overlooking all of this. This is a view looking from the Castle Bridge, and there's the Pergola Bridge again, and there's the Colonial House. There are those stairs that I mentioned that lead from that uh, bridge under the Pergola Bridge up to that uh, path. This path that we call it the path from the crossroads intersection to the long footbridge. And there's the stairs. Now, if you walk a little bit further along that path from the footbridge intersection to the long footbridge and look back, like to photograph that student, you'll see the pergola bridge and one of its arches. You'll see the path. And then the path suddenly disappears because, of course, it goes down those stairs to the footbridge that uh, is under the pergola bridge. And then you see the curvature of that path that runs from the spring to the footbridge intersection. There in the background is the Castle Bridge. So the photographer is sort of standing here looking, uh, looking down along the path and uh, you know, sort of looking this direction, looking underneath the Pergola Bridge. And if you stand at that spot today, you'll see the path from the footbridge intersection to the long footbridge. You'll see this is the path that the residents have been using and this is where we think the stairs were that went down to the, um, to the footbridge under the pergola bridge in here. And there's that curving path from the spring to the footbridge intersection. There's the restored bridge uh, to the castle. There, of course, is the castle in the background. Here's another photograph looking back. Some students, we think this is from the 1930s after the time when students were generally required to wear uniforms. You can see the uh, Pergola Bridge again. You can see the Castle Bridge in the background. You can see the Colonial House. You can see the path that leads from the, um, the Colonial House down to the footbridge intersection. And we're thinking that photograph was probably taken from around in here, looking back this direction, looking um, underneath this arch in the Pergola Bridge. And of course, looking back the other direction, you see that along this path, there was a bench, another little stop. And there was a, a lost, completely lost stone footbridge along this path. And this path itself, we think, is lost now. And remember, the gazebo is up on the hill this direction. 
So if you if you go there today, um, you start to see stone work for a stone path again, consistent with the stone path the school had. Oops, pardon me. And we think this is where the photographer was standing when they took the those pictures of the students in the snow. You follow this path, you're going to come to the spot where we think the lost stone footbridge was. Continue further on that path, you see the nice stonework of the path. And then you get to this spot uh, and you just see a lot of erosion. You see this tributary stream. You see a, a lot of, uh, of stone that we think could have been uh, portions of the uh, stone footbridge in this area. So the path would have been a stone footbridge here and then a path that continued. So in this area, we also found some really puzzling photographs in a, in a student album from 1913 to 15. There's the boiler house, the distinctive arches there. This is before the big um, chimney was there. We'll see that in a moment. And lo and behold, there was a stairway down from the boiler house that led down to a a path here and a wooden footbridge. Have a close up, there's the boiler house, there's the stairway to the path, there's the wooden footbridge. Now you look there today, well, <laughs> uh, this is considerably filled in compared to um, uh, that photograph from 1913 to 15. We think this may have all been filled in at the time of the building of this very uh, tall chimney. We'll also point out that there was an addition to the boiler house that was added later uh, so that this building uh, continues in this direction. So this was the sort of original structure of the what was called at the time the boiler house. So what was all this about? All these structures were certainly not close to this stone path from the footbridge intersection to the lost foot to the long footbridge. This lost stone footbridge is not close to these structures. So all quite puzzling. Photographer sort of standing along the path, looking, looking back. I know folks were asking about the fire station and there's the, what, what was called in this map, the heating plant, uh, also called the powerhouse now. And there's the boiler house road entrance another wooden path with a railing. So this is not the same bridge as before, a different structure, perhaps just a path or another bridge. If you, were to, if you look in that area today, now remember this is an addition to the boiler house. So the old boiler house road entrance would have been about here. So was that a wooden path with a railing in this area? all very puzzling. And then if you look at the maps, remember we referred to these maps in the beginning, the 1907 map. A lot of things missing here. Of course, there's no path from the spring to the footbridge intersection. There's no path from the footbridge intersection to the long footbridge. Um, there's the boiler house. There's the boiler house road entrance. Even the road isn't very clear in this 1907 map. There's no stairway to the path shown on the map. There's no wooden path with a railing in here. By the way, this um, the stream is called the brook and there's no stream that runs <laughs> below the road to the boiler house or sort of what you would call Hume Drive. Now, no, no sign of a stream in that area at all. Now in the 1918-19 map, we've got more features that are familiar so we've got the path from the spring to the footbridge intersection. We've got the footbridge um, to the path to the spring here. We've got um, uh, still no lost uh, footbridge. Uh, well, pardon me. We do now have the lost footbridge uh, along the path. We do now have the path from the footbridge intersection to the long footbridge. No uh, wooden railing path here. So those features from that album 
are just not found in any of these maps. And then finally, taking a last look at that 1927 map. Now at this point, it's no longer called the boiler house, but the power plant, which of course is what the condominium is called today, the power plant. Here we've got the addition to the power plant here. And there the, there's that road that runs down into uh, those buildings and of course now runs into the garage for these condominiums. Um, here we've got the footbridge intersection below the Colonial House. No castle, Colonial House, footbridge intersection. There's that area that we think was the lost footbridge. You can see the brook actually ran uh, from uh, uphill above this path down under that lost footbridge to meet at the um, footbridge intersection. Um, and then there is this puzzle sort of, and this trail just disappears. The maps don't document what happens next, but we do know that there is a stone uh, footbridge that we're gonna see in just a minute here. So what was happening in this area? Well, again, we know a lot of work on construction. We know, for example, in the 1940s, the army had sewers built to, to uh, support uh, barracks that were built along what's now Smith Drive. Um, so it's conceivable that the process of digging things up to put in sewers uh, considerably changed the ground and possibly required a change in the flow of water through this area. We know there was a modern culvert constructed that may have changed the flow of water. So now there is a tributary stream that runs below Hume Drive. So that stream that runs all the way down to the, to the spring today um, uh, actually uh, starts um, below Hume Drive and not uh, up above uh, these paths as uh, the, the old maps from the 20s and before show. If you go past this culvert, so, so I'll just mention that from the area of the lost footbridge to this culvert, you really, we haven't really found any clear continuous stone paths from the school years. Those seem to be lost. As you get past that culvert, you start seeing the stone, the type of stone path that was typical in the National Park Seminary. You continue along that path. And you'll get to this spot where you see the sort of typical uh, stone bridge walls of a particularly long kind of seeming bridge. And there's a uh, Hume Drive up along this area. And there is another culvert that seems to be you know, related to possibly runoff from Smith Drive. So uh, this is an old uh, school feature we assume but it's not shown on any maps, not shown a, on any uh, student uh, photographs. Just don't know where this path led. And that's it. That's our, our walking tour and what we've discovered starting in the Grove, leading uh, to the North uh, Glen Bridge abutment, down into the uh, Glen with the Grotto, the Grand Staircase, the Spring, and then back underneath the Pergola Bridge, across that footbridge intersection area, and then in this sort of mysterious uh, path that leads uh, to Hume Drive today. We hope that all this research has helped stimulate your interest in preserving, protecting, and restoring the Glen as a cultural landscape. And we certainly hope that this has increased your awareness of and enthusiasm for an interest in accessing the Glen. Happy to answer any final questions, Bonnie. Uh, yes, there was uh, a, um, a comment from a, a viewer that said, this was an eye opener. I had no idea that the intricacy of the National Park Seminary extended to the Woodlands connections. Amazingly interesting. And there were claps and this has been so wonderful. I was able to walk this just yesterday, someone said. Uh, thanks for all the detailed information, uh, the great job. So um, yes, I think this really was an eye-opener for a lot of people. 
Uh, I'd be interested if there were people who knew the Glen, uh, maybe even before the Beltway came through that might be viewing this now, um, that if they can give us any insight into what they remember. Um, if you can't remember right now, or if there, you can always email us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, our email's on our website there, saveourseminary.org. Um, but thank you, everyone. Uh, and thank you, Jean, for such a, a great slideshow. And thanks for all your interest and support of Save Our Seminary, everyone. All right. Good night. Good night.